back again to another UML tutorial and in this next series of videos I am going to demonstrate how to do a robustness analysis in Eclipse with Papyrus. So what is a robustness analysis? Basically the a robustness analysis is the process that you go through to go from a functional design of your project, so what the system does, to a technical design. So basically we're going to step by step uh, design the technical details of our system and I'm going to do that uh, by using a class diagram, a communication diagram and a sequence diagram. Or as a matter of fact I'm going to use multiple ones uh, but only one class diagram and this class diagram will basically contain the technical structure of our system. So what I will be showing is how using communication and sequence diagrams you can progressively build up the complete class diagram of your system. Okay, I'd like to do this example based on a scenario. So in this case I've designed a system in my use case diagram with two features. It's a movie storage system which can add a movie and show all movies. And basically we're going to implement that or design that as a class diagram designing a Java Swing application uh, using MVC architecture or something that comes close to it. Okay, so first of all, let's create a class diagram. And by the way, in this video I will focus only on the initial class diagram. In up following videos I will do the communication and sequence diagram. So okay, class diagram. I'm gonna name it movie storage class diagram. So as you can see, I still have my model here, but I've added an additional diagram to my model by right-clicking on model, choosing new diagram, class diagram. So the class diagram is shown here, can be, and we can switch between the use case diagram and class diagram. Okay, so there we go. All right, so in this case, let's, let me design the GUI first. So how I like to design a GUI, or at least my personal solution, would be is that I have a mainframe class that basically regulates all the GUI screens and then I'm going to have uh, different classes, other classes, one for every screen uh, which basically contain the actual GUI. So on the swing level, uh, Java swing level, the mainframe will be a J frame and my other classes which represent individual screens will be J panels. But before I can model every single facet I need to do some imports if they're not done yet. So I need to import my Java profile. And I want to import my Java primitive types. And lastly, I want to import the stereotypes via the profile. So I can design it as an actual Java class diagram. Okay, so I have my mainframe in place, in place, my imports are done. So let's create one class for the first screen, which is add movies. And another class for the show all movies features. So I'm going to have two screens, one for adding a movie and one for showing a movie. Uh, they are both connected to the mainframe, who is like the command center that will regulate the screen. So I'm going to draw a association and since at this point in time I don't really know what kind of relationship it'll be. I'm just going to set it to neutral association. I can always change it later. There we go. Okay, well at this point in the project Okay, let's hope this does not, not affect uh, the rest of the video. Okay, it doesn't. Okay, let's continue. Uh, Papyrus, unfortunately, still a bit unstable, so has a tendency of sometimes giving random errors. Never mind, it still serves as a proper tool to get the job done. Okay, anyway, at this point in your project, uh, you would have already designed the data that goes on in your system. Uh, since this is a simple example, I've not done the data classes yet. So let's create a data class first called movie. And this movie class will have two properties or two parameters. Uh, one that represents the title of the movie, which is, as I prefer, private. And of the data type string. 
and another attribute that represents the year of the movie which is also private but of the data type integer there we go okay um, so I have my GUI in place I have my data class in place but in line with MVC architecture I would I need a controller which serves as my middle layer or command center of for the middle layer that contains all the logic or a command center that can regulate things so let's create a controller and lastly I'm gonna need a data storage which in this case will do the physical storage of information but could for example also be a database interaction class uh, I'm just going to stick with in memory storage for the simplicity of the example, even though I don't intend to do any actual coding. There we go. So, neutral associations as well. If I'm going a bit fast through the class diagram, uh, that is because I've already covered class diagram in another video, so please refer to that if you wish to see more details. Okay, so it's already saved. So we have uh, my GUI classes, my controller class, my data storage class, and my actual data class. So in line with uh, MVC architecture and in line with a good robustness analysis practice, I am going to classify any of these, all of these classes as boundary, control, or entity, or respectively boundary being GUI, control being control logic an entity representing data. Uh, towards this end, I've actually created a, a Papyrus profile project called MVC Stereotypes. And basically what I've done inside there is I've created three stereotypes, boundary control and entity, that can be attached to a class. And I'm going to use it just to label the classes as such. Okay, if you would like to have access to this uh, project, I will, um, I will put how to download this and import I'll put how to download this project uh, in the description of this video okay but first of all I need to import it so again I'm gonna select model uh, in my model explorer go to properties go to profile in this case I'm going to choose apply profile and choose the MVC stereotypes project and the profile in there click to the right, press OK, and then I can import it, there we go. Okay, so now if I'm going to attach stereotypes to my classes, and I go to profile, press the plus, I actually have a choice out of the Java profile stereotypes and those three stereotypes I created. So let's label all these classes one by one. First of all, it's a Java class and I would consider my mainframe to be control. Why? Because mainframe doesn't contain any GOI but regulates GOI, therefore I would classify it as a controller. So there we go, two stereotypes added. Um, add movies is a J panel, it's going to display GOI, so next to it being a Java class, I would consider it a boundary class or view class. Show all movies, same thing, contains GOI. So Java class and boundary. Controller, well as the name suggests, controller is a controller, so next to a Java class it is a control class. Data storage, which takes care of the actual storage of the data as a bit of a borderline case. Um, it could be entity because it physically contains data. On the other hand, it does not actually represent data but stores it, so I would prefer to classify it as another control class. Lastly, the movie, which is pure data, is a Java class and a entity class. So there we go. Okay, before I move on, or actually more or less close this video, let me just recap a couple of things that apply. Um, GUI classes, or boundary classes, or view classes, whatever you want to call them, uh, as a rule, cannot communicate with each other. Therefore, I have this mainframe here, which I said is a regulates which screen is visible and is classified as control. Control classes can basically communicate amongst each other, can communicate with boundary, can communicate with entity if they want to. Um, 
so that's control. Entity cannot communicate to other entities, can communicate with controller, cannot communicate with boundary. Why? Because your GUI should not communicate directly with data, it should go through a controller. And yeah, this is mostly done to, to uh, reduce the number of connections between classes. So you have your controllers communicating with each other. Uh, one controller is responsible for the data. Um, data cannot communicate amongst each other because then they will be dependent off each other. And the same thing goes for screens. If you have screens communicating amongst each other, you're going to eventually, certainly with a large number of screens, have a huge spider web of connections. So this is what I feel is a very clean solution to this problem. And one last thing you will notice that I am not going overboard in a lot of adding a lot of detail here. In the first place, I've made my relationships all neutral. Why? Because I can update them later. Um, my data is already designed, so that one is full detailed. But most of all, this is because in the following steps, the communication and sequence diagram, I will actually start adding more detail to this class diagram. So the initial robustness analysis class diagram is just a very basic structure and you'll fill in the details later on. Okay, with that said, I will see you in the next video in which I'm going to expand on this robustness analysis class diagram with communication diagrams. So, see you next time. Mm -hmm.